What if I told you that one of the most powerful speeches in American history was delivered by a woman who was born into slavery, never learned to read or write, and spoke with a Dutch accent? And what if I told you that this woman was not only an abolitionist and a women's rights activist, but also a preacher, a spy, a nurse, and a mother of five children? Would you believe me? Well, you should, because this is the true story of Sojourner Truth, the woman who spoke the truth. Hi everyone, and welcome to Black Heroes in History, where we tell you the educational stories of our heroes of black history. In this video, we're going to learn about the amazing life and legacy of Sojourner Truth, one of the most influential and inspiring figures of all time. But before we dive into her story, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our updates. All right, let's get started. Sojourner Truth was born Isabella Baumfrey around 1797 in Ulster County, New York, as one of the 10 or 12 children of James and Elizabeth Baumfrey, who were both enslaved by a Dutch farmer named Charles Hardenberg. Isabella's first language was Dutch, and she spoke it until she was about nine years old. She was sold at an auction to John Neely for $100, along with a flock of sheep. Neely was a cruel and violent master who beat the young girl regularly. She was sold two more times by age 13 and ultimately ended up at the West Park, New York, home of John Dumont and his second wife, Elizabeth. Isabella suffered a lot of hardship and abuse at the hands of her masters and mistresses. She was forced to work long hours in the fields, the kitchen, and the laundry. She was also raped and impregnated by a white man, possibly Dumont himself, and gave birth to a son named Peter. She later married an enslaved man named Thomas, who was owned by a different master and had four more children with him, James, Diana, Elizabeth, and Sophia. She also developed a strong faith in God and had visions and voices that guided her. She later said, God was always near me and that I never wanted for anything but what I received. In 1826, Isabella heard a rumor that she and her children were going to be sold to a plantation in the South. She knew that this would mean a worse fate than death. She decided to escape with her youngest daughter, Sophia, leaving behind her husband and other children. She later said, I did not run off, for I thought that wicked, but I walked off, believing that to be all right. Isabella walked about 20 miles to New Paltz, New York, where she and her daughter were taken in as free people by Isaac and Maria Van Wagenen, a Quaker couple who opposed slavery. They paid Dumont $20 for Isabella's services until the New York anti-slavery law emancipating all enslaved people took effect in 1827. Isabella was overjoyed to be free, but she was also determined to get back her other children, especially Peter, who had been sold illegally to a man in Alabama. With the help of the Van Wagenens and some abolitionist lawyers, she sued Dumont and his associates in court and won. She became the first black woman to sue a white man and win in the United States. Isabella moved to New York City in 1829 with her two youngest children, James and Sophia. She worked as a domestic servant for several families, including that of Elijah Pearson, a religious fanatic who claimed to be a prophet. She joined his cult-like group called The Kingdom, where she met another self-proclaimed prophet named Robert Matthews, also known as Matthias. She became his housekeeper and follower, but soon realized that he was a fraud and a murderer. She exposed him to the authorities and the press and testified against him in court. She also wrote a memoir of her experiences with him called The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, which she dictated to Olive Gilbert, a white abolitionist. In 1843, Isabella had a spiritual awakening 
and changed her name to Sojourner Truth, meaning Traveler of Truth. She said that God told her to travel up and down the land, showing the people their sins and being a sign unto them. She left New York City and began her mission as an itinerant preacher and activist. She traveled across the country, speaking at camp meetings, churches, conventions, and streets. She spoke about abolitionism, women's rights, temperance, prison reform, and other social issues. She also sang hymns and spirituals, such as Go Down, Moses, and Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. She became known for her powerful voice, her witty humor, and her plain language. She said, I talk plain. One of Sojourner's most famous speeches was delivered at the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio, in 1851. It is known as the Ain't I a Woman speech, although there is some debate about whether she actually used that phrase or not. In her speech, she challenged the stereotypes and prejudices that white men and women had about black women. She argued that black women deserve the same rights and respect as white women and men. She said, that man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me, look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man, when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne thirteen children and seen most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Sojourner's speech was met with applause and admiration by some and ridicule and hostility by others. But she did not let anyone silence her or intimidate her. She continued to speak out for the causes she believed in and to challenge the status quo. She also met and befriended many other famous abolitionists and activists such as Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Lucretia Mott, and Susan B. Anthony. She said, I am for keeping the thing going while things are stirring, because if we wait till it is still, it will take a great while to get it going again. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Sojourner saw it as a chance to end slavery once and for all. She volunteered to serve as a nurse, a cook, a laundress, and a counselor for the Union Army. She also helped recruit black soldiers for the cause and collected food and clothing for the freed people. She said, the way is open and the time has come for the slaves to be free. In 1864, Sojourner had the honor of meeting President Abraham Lincoln at the White House. She thanked him for signing the Emancipation Proclamation and gave him a copy of her book, she also asked him to do more for the rights and welfare of the black people. She said, we colored people have a great deal to thank God for and a great deal to ask him for. After the war, Sojourner settled in Battle Creek, Michigan, where she bought a house and some land. She continued to work for the rights and welfare of the black people, especially the newly freed ones. She also supported the women's suffrage movement, advocating for the right to vote for all women. She said, There is a great stir about colored men getting their rights, but not a word about the colored women. And if colored men get their rights, and not colored women theirs, you see the colored men will be masters over the women, and it will be just as bad as it was before. Sojourner also traveled to Washington, D.C where she met President Ulysses S. Grant and other politicians. She petitioned the government to provide land and education for the freed people. She also challenged the segregation and discrimination that she faced in public transportation, hotels, and other places. She said, I have as much rights as anybody to ride on the cars. Sojourner Truth died on November 26, 1883, at the age of 86. 
she was buried in Oak Hill Cemetery in Battle Creek next to her grandson. Her legacy lives on as a symbol of courage, justice, and truth. She is honored with statues, museums, schools, and parks named after her. She is also featured on a U.S. postage stamp, the first black woman to be honored in this way. She said, I'm not gonna die, I'm going home like a shooting star. And that's the end of our video. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed this story of Sojourner Truth, the woman who spoke the truth. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new videos. We have more educational stories of our heroes of black history coming up. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching and see you next time.